when God created this earth, he wanted, he created the earth and he wanted some children to come to this earth so that they can play and enjoy and sing songs and do some dance and he will enjoy it. He thought of it. He is a creator. He decided, let us have some children. So he made a husband and wife. He made, he created one husband and one wife. That was Adam and Eve. One mother and one father. So that the children can be born and they can come and play and enjoy. And God will see them and he will enjoy. He is the creator, he decided. So he created Adam and Eve. And any father to his children will always give something good, some teachings, some good teachings. We all give our children some good teachings for the benefit of those children. So also God gave the teaching. And what was the teaching? Teaching was the religion. What is the religion? God taught them the, the first lesson of God taught them the religion. The religion is he told to both of them live in unity and live in peace. That is the religion. Never break unity and never break peace. If you are in unity, peace will automatically come to you. So he taught the first lesson of unity. And unity is possible, all your hearts are pure. Unity is not possible without hearts being pure. So the first lesson of religion was given by God himself to the first mother and father, to the first husband and wife, to the first man and women of this earth. We are all children of Adam and Eve. They are our forefathers and forefathers and forefathers. Uh, you know, they are our, uh, in fact, we are the children of Adam and Eve. And the first lesson was given to them. And God told them that when you be a children, teach them this religion of mine, the God's religion, that is, they should live in unity and peace. And tell them, then when they be your children, they should also teach the same lesson to their children. Unity and peace. This is the eternal religion, changeless religion. This religion of God will never change. It is the religion given by God himself. But people forget the basic teachings and <laughs> out of ignorance, they create hatred, you know, from one another, and they think this is a religion. How ignorant they are. And we do so many fighting in the name of religion, killing, murder, so many things are happening around the world just in the name of religion. This is ignorance. All the revealed books of God are unerring and collected wisdom that are sent by one God as required from age to age to open the mental locks of mankind and to cure the maladies of the age. So Baha'u'llah said that you have forgotten the first lesson that was given by God. This was the lesson given by God, unity and peace. You have forgotten the lesson of unity unity of hearts. Now the remedy for all the ills of today is only one, that is unity of hearts. Again return to the same teaching which God given to the Adam or Eve, the first lesson that God gave to the first, first uh, inhabitant of this earth, the first inhabitant of this earth were Adam and Eve. The first lesson that was given by God was to live in unity, that unity of hearts, and peace will come. So that is a lesson. That is the eternal religion. And that is the changeless religion of God. You know, what is the school? A school is the lighthouse of society. 
a school and a university is a lighthouse of society to provide meaningful education, a spiritual direction, guidance and leadership to students, their parents, and the society in general. You are all sitting in a school. This is also your school for three days, four days. You are in a school. A school will give you some guidance. But this school is meant not only to guide the students, but also to the parents and also to the society. A school must be restored to its traditional role as the transmit as the lighthouse of society, and teachers must be restored to the traditional role as the transmitters of morality, builders of character, and custodians of the culture. If the school does not become the lighthouse of society, it will become the dark house of society. Either the school will become the lighthouse of society or it will become the dark house. So let us make our school the lighthouse of society and provide meaningful education, spiritual direction, guidance and leadership to students, their parents and the society in general. So that's why it is important to give our children this lesson that the school is the lighthouse of society. What is the light? Light means not the electric light, not the lantern light, or not the candle light. Light means light of God, light of our Creator. Light of the Creator means the teachings of His Creator. These are the revealed books of God. They are unerring and collectivism. If all the learned people of the world find together, they want to find out a mistake in the Holy Quran, or Bible, or Guru Granth Sahib, or Tripitak, or Kitab Ekdas, or Bhagavad Gita, they cannot. Because these are not books written by any man who was born or who died. They are the books of one who has never taken birth, who never dies, who has no name. They are the books which have come from unknown source, and the source is the Creator. President Donald Trump President of the United States of America. Do or die. Karo ya maro. We request you to keep your promise of uniting the world or else we are all destined to perish in a nuclear war which does not seem to be very far. The future of 7.5 billion people of the world, including 2.5 billion children of the world and the generations yet to be born, has become progressively more insecure and unprotected during past over seven decades since the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the recent spread of international terrorism, global warming, stockpiling of weapons of mass destruction and fear of third world war and nuclear holocaust it is now a situation of do or die for all of us dear president trump bravo and kudos to you only the brave can say what you have said on the following dates some historic statements by president donald trump you said on 15th December 2015 in Las Vegas, USA while addressing US electorate during your campaign for US presidential election. I think I'm going to bring unity to the world. That's what I do. I bring peace and I bring unity. You said on 22nd May 2017 at Tel Aviv airport during a visit to Israel. Now we must work together to build a future where the nations of the region are at peace and all of our children can grow and grow up strong and grow up free from terrorism and violence. You said on 24th May 2017 in the Vatican 
to His Holiness the Pope. I am more determined than ever to pursue peace in the world. You said on 19th September 2017 at the UN General Assembly, New York. Making a better life for our people also requires us to work together in close harmony and unity to create a more safe and peaceful future for all people. You said on 26 January 2018 in Davos, Switzerland at the World Economic Forum that we are all stronger when free, sovereign nations cooperate toward shared goals and they cooperate toward shared dreams. You said on 24th October 2018 in Mosini, Wisconsin, USA. We want all sons to come, come together, together in peace and harmony. We can do it. We can do it. We can do it. It'll happen. We are all proud of you as the greatest world leader because you have promised to unite the world and make it a nice place worth living. A meeting of sovereign countries and formation of a world parliament like that of the European Parliament of 28 sovereign countries is the only way to unite the world and bring peace to the world. Some statements made about world unity by great world leaders. Some great world leaders have said, Mahatma Gandhi said, the future peace, security and ordered progress of the world demand a world federation of free nations and on no other basis can the problems of the modern world be solved. Winston Churchill, Prime Minister of Great Britain had said, unless we establish a world government, it will not be possible for us to avert World War III. John F. Kennedy, President of USA said, we must create worldwide law and law enforcement agency as we outlaw worldwide war and weapons. Dwight D. Eisenhower, President of USA had said, there must be law steadily invoked and respected by all nations. For without law, the world promises only such meager justice as the pity of the strong upon the weak. Mikhail Gorbachev, President of USSR had said, an awareness of the need for some kind of global government is gaining ground, one in which all members of the world community would take part. Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India said, either the world will unite or it will perish. Dear President Trump, many world leaders in the past have said that world unity is required and it is the only solution to save mankind from complete annihilation. But only you have promised you will unite the world and establish peace on the earth to US public and your voters, to His Holiness, the Pope and to the people of the world. Dear President Trump, you are the first world leader in the history of mankind who has committed to bring about world unity and world peace. You are the greatest leader of mankind who has said that I am going to bring unity to the world. There have been many world leaders before you who have only said that unity of the world is needed. But you are the only one who said that. I think I'm going to bring unity to the world. President Donald Trump created history by befriending North Korean leader. Mr. President Trump, being the leader of the most powerful country in the world, you have shown the greatest capability to leave the past behind by moving ahead for the good of the people of the world with your power of unconditional love. You have lived the words of the great US President, Abraham Lincoln, who once said that the best way to destroy an enemy is to make him 
a friend. It takes a lot of courage and willpower to embrace a once hostile nation and announce that you share a very special bond with its leader. At the historic Singapore summit on 12 June 2018, you shook hands with chairman of North Korea, Kim Jong-un, and turned hostility into friendship. This was one of the rarest, unprecedented, and unthought of acts of your courage in the history of humanity. You have forgiven a once hostile country and saved the world from the scourge of war. At your press meet in the White House, you had said, anyone can make war, but only the most courageous can make peace. And I will do whatever it takes to make the world a safer place. In response to a question from Time magazine, Mr. President Trump, you had rightfully proclaimed that the past does not have to define the future. Adversaries can become friends. The world too has responded very positively to this development and has hailed you as a strong and decisive world leader who has shattered old diplomatic norms. You have created history as it was unthought of to get North Korea to take concrete steps towards denuclearization. It is time now to live the great legacy that you have inherited from the US presidents. Your three predecessors had used their decision-making ability vested in them as the US president and used their power to rewrite history as follows. American President Woodrow Wilson initiated the formation of the League of Nations in 1919 through the collaboration of 42 sovereign nations of the world to end World War I to achieve the shared goal and shared dream of world unity and world peace. Although only one-fourth of the countries of the world attended this meeting of world leaders and still the formation of League of Nations saved the world from the scourge of World War I. American President Franklin D. Roosevelt initiated the formation of the United Nations in 1945. Initially, through the collaboration of only 51 sovereign nations of the world to end the World War II to achieve the shared goal and shared dream of world unity and world peace. Although nearly one-fourth of the countries of the world attended this meeting of sovereign world leaders and still the formation of United Nations saved the entire humanity from the scourge of World War II. Today, 193 countries are its member and for the past 73 years, there has been no Third World War. American President Harry S. Truman initiated the formation of European Union by implementing the Marshall Plan in 1948. Through a donation of 13 billion US dollars to rebuild Europe, which ultimately led to the formation of European Parliament. Initially, through the collaboration of six sovereign European nations, which grew to include 28 sovereign nations to achieve the shared goal and shared dream of unity of European countries, where no nation is required to give up its sovereignty. Since its formation, it has succeeded in preventing wars between otherwise warring European nations and has brought lasting unity and peace in Europe. For the past 70 years, since the formation of European Union, there has been no European war. Dear Mr. Trump, like the above three far-sighted and visionary US presidents, you must 
now call an urgent meeting of sovereign countries of the world. With even a few countries attending initially to collaborate to form a world parliament for a shared goal and shared dream of world unity and world peace. In such a new democratic system, every country will enjoy its sovereignty and at the same time will collaborate with other sovereign nations to achieve and realize the shared goal and shared dream of world unity and world peace. Unity is the biggest strength. Though a single nation or a rogue nation can threaten or challenge the authority of one nation. However, no single nation or a rogue nation can challenge the authority of the nations that have collaborated. For example, once the League of Nations with collaboration of 42 sovereign nations was formed, no individual nation or any rogue nation on earth had the courage to challenge its authority. Then, when United Nations was formed with collaboration of 51 sovereign nations, no individual nation or any rogue nation, howsoever, had the courage to challenge it. And similarly, no nation can oppose or challenge the European Parliament, which is the collaboration of 28 sovereign nations. Unity has strength. And even if a few like-minded sovereign nations can come together and collaborate for a shared goal and a shared dream of world unity and world peace to form a world parliament, no single nation or any rogue nation will have the courage to challenge or oppose this world parliament. We believe that you, President Donald Trump, will take a similar initiative to form a world parliament like that of League of Nations, the United Nations and the European Parliament to save the humanity from the threat of World War III and a nuclear holocaust. Dear Mr. President, if Third World War were to happen today, the whole of humanity will be wiped out as it will not be a conventional war like that of World War I or World War II or European War or any territorial war. But it will be a nuclear war and no one would be left alive in this world. Then there will be no need left to form a world parliament. Abdul Baha, interpreter of the teachings of his father Baha'u'llah, the manifestation of God for this age, who founded the Baha'i faith about 200 years back, made pronouncements on behalf of his father regarding America and a destiny and prophesied, this American democracy will be the first nation to establish the foundation of international agreement. It will be the first nation to proclaim the unity of mankind. It will be the first to unfurl the standard of the most great peace. And again, the American people are indeed worthy of being the first to build the tabernacle of the great peace and proclaim the oneness of mankind. For America hath developed powers and capacities greater and more wonderful than other nations. The American nation is equipped and empowered to accomplish that which will adorn the pages of history to become the envy of the world and be blessed in both the East and the West for the triumph of its people. The American continent gives signs and evidences of very great advancement. Its future is even more promising for its influence and illumination are far-reaching. It will lead all nations spiritually and politically. Abdul Baha said, 
true civilization will unfurl its banner in the midmost heart of the world whenever a certain number of its distinguished and high-minded sovereigns, the shining exemplars of devotion and determination, shall, for the good and happiness of all mankind, arise with firm resolve and clear vision to establish the cause of universal peace. They must make the cause of peace the object of general consultation and seek by every means in their power to establish a union of the nations of the world. They must conclude a binding treaty and establish a covenant, the provisions of which shall be sound, inviolable and definite. They must proclaim it to all the world and obtain for it the sanction of all the human race. This supreme and noble undertaking, the real source of the peace and well-being of all the world, should be regarded as sacred by all that dwell on earth. All the forces of humanity must be mobilized to ensure the stability and permanence of this most great covenant. In this all-embracing pact, the limits and frontiers of each and every nation should be clearly fixed. The principles underlying the relations of governments towards one another definitely laid down and all international agreements and obligations ascertained. President of America, Harry Truman had said, men make history and not the other way around. In periods where there is no leadership, society stands still. Progress occurs when courageous, skillful leaders seize the opportunity to change things for the better. The world today has become increasingly interdependent. Today, no nation, howsoever powerful, can survive alone. Now is the time when a world leader needs to come forward and take lead to unite all the nations of the world. We believe President Donald Trump is one such leader who can take lead to unite the world by calling a meeting of world leaders and form a world parliament. Abdul Baha had also said, do not busy yourself only in your own concerns or the concerns of your own countries alone. Let your thoughts be fixed upon that which will rehabilitate the fortunes of mankind and sanctify the hearts and souls of men. Dear Mr. President Trump, in you we see the strongest and the most compassionate world leader who can rehabilitate the fortunes of mankind by forming a world parliament. If you feel like consulting with us further on this issue, we can come to meet you in the White House. On behalf of 2.5 billion children of the world and the generations yet to be born, as well as the entire humanity, we are looking towards you for your action to call a meeting of world leaders in 2019 and form a world parliament in 2019. If you feel like consulting with us further on this issue, we can come to meet and consult with you. On behalf of 2.5 billion children of the world and the generations yet to be born, as well as the entire humanity, we are looking towards you for your action to call a meeting of world leaders in 2019 to form a world parliament. God bless you. Yours faithfully, Dr. Jagdish Gandhi, Founder Manager, City Montessori School, Lucknow. Convener, International Conferences of Chief Justices of the World and Self-Appointed Guardian of the world's over 2 billion children of the world and the generations yet to be born.